Hi, thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk to you about observability and open telemetry. If you want to know what is observability, what does this buzzword even mean? What is open telemetry and how can you use open telemetry to better troubleshoot and monitor your applications? This talk is for you. We will start with an introduction on observability and then we'll go into open telemetry. We'll explain what is open telemetry and what are the different tools that open telemetry provides. And we will finish with a live demo of open telemetry. So you will be able to understand how can you use open telemetry in your applications to have better observability and to better troubleshoot and monitor your own applications in production. So let's start. My name is Yosef Arbiv, and I'm married to Adi and father of three amazing young boys. I am an engineering group leader at Outshift, which is a part of Cisco, and I am a CNCF ambassador. My group in Outshift is responsible for contributing code and developing the Open Telemetry SDKs, so we are a part of the community that builds Open Telemetry. So let's start with some basics about observability. And the first question that I want to answer is what is observability? Observability is a very hot buzzword today, but many people are not exactly sure about what, what does it even mean. So the definition of observability is this. Observability is a measure of how well the internal state of a system can be inferred from the system's external outputs. So if you're able to know in which internal state your system currently is by looking on your system's external outputs, you can say that your system is observable. But what exactly does it mean in the context of software development? So let's take a deeper look on our specific use case. We will have three main challenges that observability can help us with. The first challenge is modeling our system. This is an example for a simple application, simple web application uh, running on a single host. So even this uh, 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 simple application that has only one host and is talking to a database and has a, a, an API that transfers the cores into it can be in many different states, right? Uh, there are different uh, uh, states with the different modules inside the host can be. Uh, we can have a problem in the database. So even in such a small uh, uh, and a monolith uh, uh, application, we can have many different states. But this become even more complex when we are talking about distributed system. So this is another very simple application, but now using uh, AWS architecture uh, with many uh, uh, different microservices talking to each other. And now it is much more complex to understand what is our system? What are the services that make our system? What are the different states that our system can be in? So this is the first challenge that we are facing and the first challenge that observability can help us with. The second challenge is monitoring our system. We want to know whether our system is working as it should be or do we have an issue in, in one of our components of our system. Uh, maybe right now our system is working, but uh, uh, we are getting near uh, a, a state where uh, something bad will happen if we have more, more and more users. So maybe now everything is good, but in a couple of minutes or a couple of hours, we'll have a problem. Um, monitoring is another aspect that observability can help us with. And again, when we're talking about distributed system, about cloud native applications, it can be much more, much more difficult because we have to monitor a lot of different services and ideally, we would like to have one place where we can see all of the different uh, uh, metrics and alerts from all of the different microservices. So we have one dashboard to look at. So this is another challenge that 
systems and frameworks for observability can help us with. And the last challenge is troubleshooting our application. Let's say that we have a system for monitoring and we have an alert. We have too many 500 errors in our system. It can take us a lot of time to understand where is this error coming from. We need to understand what is the flow in our system that caused this error. Then we need to go through this flow in our system, understand what are the different microservices that participate in this flow. And then we need to look into the logs of each one of those microservices and understand where exactly is this error happening, what is the root cause of this error, and how can we fix, hopefully, this error. Again, if we have the right uh, frameworks for observability, it can help us deal with such errors and to troubleshoot them faster. So this is why we need good systems for observability. So in order to deal with those challenges, we have the three pillars of observability that most of the frameworks and the utilities uh, for observability use. And these are metrics, logs, and traces. Metrics are essentially numbers over a timeline, and metrics tells us what is happening in our system. Uh, how many transactions do we have? What is the duration of those transactions? Um, how many errors do we have? Uh, and so on. Then we have logs. Logs are the most basic kind of telemetry data. Almost any system uh, uh, produces logs. And logs tells us why something happened in our system. Uh, and then we have traces. Traces uh, tells us where something happened inside our system. And when we are talking about distributed systems, we need to talk about distributed traces. So let's try to understand what exactly is a distributed trace. This is an example of a, a, a timeline view of a distributed trace. So in this case, we had operation A uh, that is uh, uh, represented in this uh, uh, graph. Uh, and each tile in this uh, uh, graph is a span, which is a part of the entire distributed trace. So we have operation A that triggered this uh, uh, trace. Then we had operation B uh, that in it triggered C and D. When D completed, the operation B completed too. Then operation E was triggered. And when operation E was triggered, the entire uh, operation A was completed. And this entire distributed trace was also completed. Um, so each one of those operations is a span. A span is a single unit of work in our distributed trace. And all of them together are a single distributed trace. This is another representation of a distributed trace, uh, now in a graph representation. So each node in this graph is a microservice that participated in this uh, flow. Uh, and the arrows here are the spans, the operation that happened between those microservices. So here you can see that we had a checkout operation in our application. And you can see how a distributed trace can help us understand where an error happened inside this flow, inside this operation. So you can see that we had a checkout operation that involved accessing uh, a MongoDB and uh, a Redis cache. And when we tried to, to reach out for the discount services, we had an error. So this is why this uh, uh, flow is red. And this is an example of how a distributed trace can help you connect uh, uh, between the, uh, uh, the monitoring part uh, when you had an error to the logs of your system to help you get to the right place of the system and to find the right logs uh, that will help you research 
and find the actual root cause for this error. So now we understand why observability is important and why we need the right tools and the right frameworks for observability in order to increase the observability of our systems. But now we have a new challenge. We have too many vendors for observability. We have different services, different programming languages, maybe a couple of different cloud providers, and we have different teams, and all of these create different needs for observability. So most of the companies nowadays use more than one uh, vendor for observability. And this creates a challenge for the development and the DevOps teams. This is just the beginning of the CNCF observability landscape. And as you can see, we have a lot of different vendors. And connecting our systems to those applications, to those observability vendors can be expensive. Uh, it can take a lot of time for the development and the DevOps teams. We need to collect the data from the different microservices, the different parts of our systems, and send this data uh, to the vendors that we use. So in order to deal with this challenge, in order to create a single source of truth, uh, a single way, a unified way to create telemetry data and to send telemetry data, we have open telemetry. Open telemetry is a CNCF open source project. It was created about four years ago as a manager of open tracing and open census. And the open telemetry mission is to enable effective observability by making high quality portable telemetry ubiquitous. And we do it by following those guidelines from the open telemetry vision. And I want to focus on three of those guidelines. The first one is that telemetry should be easy. We want our customers to be able to send telemetry data fast without having to uh, deal with too much configuration and installation and to create the telemetry data easily. So this is the first guideline. The second guideline is that telemetry should be vendor neutral. So you can uh, instrument your applications, you can send the data from your application and create metrics, traces, and logs from your application without having to decide on a single vendor that you're using to visualize this data. So if you're using open telemetry, you can actually uh, uh, use a couple of different vendors or backends for observability. And you can view all of your data, uh, all of your open telemetry data on those uh, uh, different vendors. And the last guideline I want to talk about is that telemetry should be built in. We believe that telemetry data is not something that you add to your application uh, uh, after you build it and you want to start uh, 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 monitoring it. Telemetry should be something that is built into your application from day one, uh, and we create our instrumentations accordingly. So open telemetry is a very successful uh, open source project. It is the, the second most uh, active CNCF open source project uh, with uh, uh, a huge number of, of monthly uh, contributions. Uh, and it's the project with the highest uh, uh, usage increase uh, last year, according to the uh, CNCF survey, we had 43% of user increase. So open telemetry is getting more and more attention and more and more users are instrumenting their applications with open telemetry. So let's try to understand how does it look like uh, to have open telemetry as a part of your application. So this is a typical architecture of an application using uh, open telemetry. We have the open telemetry SDKs uh, running as a part of our application. Uh, and we all can also have processors and exporters running uh, as a part of our application or beside our application. Then we can have the open telemetry collector that collects the data from all of our different services, 
process it and export the data to the backend. And as you can see, the backend is not a part of OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry deals with the generation of the data, the collection of the data, and exportation of the telemetry data to any backend that we are using. So let's talk a little bit more about all of these parts that builds OpenTelemetry. First, we have the specifications. The specifications uh, are the most basic part of OpenTelemetry, and the specification tells us how does the telemetry data looks like? How does a metric look like? Uh, what is a trace? What is a span? Uh, and so on. And the specification also tells us um, what are the expectations from the different libraries that we are using? What are the expectations from the SDKs? What is the API uh, for creating uh, a span? What is the API for creating a trace? And so on. Then we have the language SDKs. So for each programming language, we have an SDK, and the core of the SDK are the implementations for the OpenTelemetry APIs. So we have uh, uh, the implementation of the API for the specific language. So for example, creating a trace, creating a metric, and so on. Uh, so this is the first part of the SDK. And then we have the second part, which are the extensions. So for each language, we have an extensions for the SDK. Uh, the extensions can be uh, processors and exporter uh, that can process the data uh, right at the application as a part of the SDK and can export the data to uh, different uh, kind of, of backends, different protocols, uh, and so on. And another kind of, of extensions can be uh, instrumentations. So if you remember this uh, uh, graph from earlier, you can see that we have many different uh, microservices, right? We have many different frameworks uh, and we don't want uh, the users to create the spans and to create uh, uh, um, the data from that describe this behavior uh, manually, right? We want it to be created automatically. So, <clears throat> uh, we have the extensions that instrument our applications and can create those uh, spans and traces automatically for us. So one part is the part that creates uh, uh, the, the data, that collects the data from the application. So uh, the start time of the span, the end time of the span, uh, the metadata from the request and so on. Um, and another part is the propagation of the context. Um, we need to create a lot of different spans for each operation. And then at the back end, we want to be able to connect all of these spans to a single distributed trace. So this is another thing that OpenTelemetry does for you. It can propagate uh, uh, the context between uh, the different services automatically for you. Uh, there are different levels of uh, automatic instrumentations. So and it depends on, on the programming language that you're using. For some languages, you can just run the OpenTelemetry agent and the agent uh, instrument your entire application uh, seamlessly. So you don't, don't have to change any line of code in your application. You just have to change uh, uh, to, to, to add the agent uh, on runtime. Uh, and on some other applications, uh, programming languages, you do have uh, uh, to, to add the instrumentation library, and this instrumentation library uh, does the instrumentation for you. So the level of, of the uh, how uh, automatic is the instrumentation uh, change depending on uh, the programming language that you are using. Let's talk a little bit about the OpenTelemetry collector. So the collector is a tool that OpenTelemetry provides, uh, and it has two major parts. Uh, first, it can receive data from many different sources. So if you have uh, a lot of different uh, microservices, they can all send the data to your OpenTelemetry collector. Uh, and it can also receive data from other sources. So if you have um, uh, some kind of old agent creating data and sending telemetry data, uh, probably you, we already have uh, a, a receiver that supports these kind of agents that can receive the data 
uh, that is external to open telemetry and um, adapt it to the open telemetry standards. The other part are the processors that process the data. So we can have all kinds of processors running on our open telemetry collector. Um, so for example, we can sample the data. Uh, um, we can uh, remove some of the uh, data from the spans and so on. And then we have the exporters. The exporters uh, send the data uh, to one or many different uh, telemetry backends. Uh, and on those backends, you can visualize uh, the data. But if you remember earlier, I showed that you can also have uh, exporters running as a part of the SDK on your application. So when do you need to use the, the collector? The first reason to use an open telemetry collector is if you don't want each and every microservice in your application to send the data to the telemetry backend. So you can have uh, uh, the collector run beside your microservices. Um, all of the microservices send the data to the collector, and then the collector aggregates data and send it to the backend. Uh, this way, you can have um, a network separation between your application and the telemetry backend, and you can also improve the performance of your application because uh, the microservices don't need to, uh, to waste time on, on the network operation. It just sends the data to the collector and the network operations uh, and the pro processing of the, um, uh, of the data happens on the collector. Uh, another reason can be if you have uh, complicated processors or unique exporters and maybe you, we don't have them for each and every programming language or you just don't want to uh, include those processors and exporters in each and every part of your application. So you can have your processors uh, in a single place on the collector uh, and you don't have to install them everywhere across your application. So this is uh, uh, a couple of reasons uh, to use the open telemetry collector. So now you have your application instrumented you are collecting telemetry data from all of the different parts of your application, and you want to visual, visualize uh, this data. So if you're using open telemetry, you have uh, many different backends that you can choose from. Uh, first, we have a lot of different open source projects. Some of these are created by commercial companies. Uh, some of these are also a part of the CNCF. And you can use um, each one of these projects for visualizing metrics, visualizing traces from open telemetry. At Cisco, we created Teletrace, which is an open source project for visualizing uh, traces. So if you're interested in traces visualization, I really recommend checking it out. Then of course, there are a lot of different commercial vendors that supports open telemetry. Uh, we have a full list of these vendors uh, in open telemetry website. Uh, and again, at Cisco, we have AppDynamics Cloud, which is a cloud native solution for application monitoring and troubleshooting. So you can check this out as well. Um, and another part of open telemetry that I want to talk about is the open telemetry community. So there is a really great community that builds open telemetry. Uh, all of the big companies. Uh... So let's talk a little bit about the open telemetry community and what the open telemetry community provides to you as an open telemetry user. So as I said before, open telemetry is a very active project. Uh, we have contributors and maintainers from all of the big um, observability vendors and from the big uh, cloud vendors. Um, and we have a really, really great community in Open Telemetry. Uh, the first thing that the Open Telemetry community provides, of course, are the documentation for Open Telemetry. So you can uh, see the documentation for Open Telemetry for the different SDKs 
for the different uh, uh, agents for the OpenTelemetry collector under OpenTelemetry.io. Uh, um, of course, we also have uh, the GitHub repositories where you can see the actual code uh, for uh, the OpenTelemetry SDKs, for the instrumentations. You can see open issues. Uh, you can discuss open issues, open bugs with the maintainers, with the contributors, uh, and you can see previous discussions in OpenTelemetry uh, GitHub repositories. We also have um, uh, the CNCF Slack space, where we have a lot of uh, specific OpenTelemetry channels. So we have the main channel for OpenTelemetry, but we also have specific channels for the OpenTelemetry collectors, for the specific uh, SDKs, for specific languages. Uh, and this is another great place for you to ask questions, to discuss issues with the maintainers, with the contributors. So you can check out uh, uh, the CNCF uh, Slack space. And the last thing that I want to talk about regarding the community is the SIG meeting. So for every uh, uh, sub-project of OpenTelemetry, so for example, for the collector, for the specific programming languages, we have a SIG. A SIG is a special interest group, and this is a group of um, contributors and maintainers of this specific sub-project. So each one of those uh, SIGs uh, has a SIG meeting. Uh, usually it happens uh, once in a week or once in uh, uh, two weeks. And in those SIG meetings, you can uh, talk with the maintainers, you can talk uh, with the contributors, um, and you can do it in, in real time and not uh, with offline communication. All of the SIGs are automatically recorded and uploaded to uh, YouTube, so you can watch previous recordings of previous SIG meetings. Uh, and of course, the, uh, uh, the agenda of these meetings is also open to the public, and you can see the agenda, you can add items to the agenda if you have uh, uh, something that you want to discuss with the community. So by now, I am sure that you understand why OpenTelemetry is such a great framework for observability, and you want to start using it, right? So the question that people ask is, what is the status of OpenTelemetry? Can I use it in production? Is it stable? So I'll start with the bottom line. Um, generally speaking, for traces and metrics, OpenTelemetry is stable, and we have a good coverage uh, for most of the programming languages and uh, most of the frameworks. So if you want to use OpenTelemetry for traces, uh, you have automatic instrumentation for most of the common frameworks, uh, and you can create metrics on your own, and we have some uh, frameworks that already support automatic instrumentation for metrics as well. Um, but if we get to the details, uh, so it's a little bit more complicated than that. OpenTelemetry is a collection of tools and SDKs, and we have a different status for each one of those. So I really recommend that you uh, uh, check out OpenTelemetry.io slash status if you want to use OpenTelemetry uh, for something that is not traces. For traces, it is really, uh, uh, generally, uh, I can say that it is uh, stable, and you can use OpenTelemetry traces uh, for almost any uh, programming language, and for most of the common frameworks, we already have a great coverage. Um, when we're talking about metrics, as, as I said before, uh, the APIs are stable, um, and we have support for some of the languages. And when it comes to logs, it's a little bit uh, uh, more complicated. Um, the approach in OpenTelemetry for logs is different than uh, uh, metrics and traces. When we're talking about metrics and traces, OpenTelemetry provides a way to create metrics and traces uh, uh, for you, uh, and you can create those metrics with OpenTelemetry, automatically or manually. When we're talking about logs, we take a different approach. In logs, OpenTelemetry supports 
connecting uh, uh, your existing logs with a framework that you have in your programming language to the open telemetry uh, trace ID and span ID and so on. Uh, so we integrate the existing frameworks for logging with the open telemetry uh, telemetry data. So if you're interested in uh, logs as well, I recommend that you check the status for a specific programming language. And I do want to mention that we have a new project that we're working on in open telemetry, which is profiling. And this is another step uh, that we, we want uh, our users to be able to have when you're using open telemetry. So we are currently working in open telemetry on defining the specifications uh, for profiling with open telemetry. And this is something that, we, that will be available uh, in the future. So now that we understand what open telemetry is and how you can use it, we are ready for the most exciting part of the talk, the demo. The demo that I'm about to show you is the open telemetry community demo. This is a web store built with the uh, microservices architecture, and it uses open telemetry to create, generate, and send telemetry data from all of the microservices that build this uh, web store. And this is actually a part of the open telemetry project. So as open telemetry evolves, also the open telemetry demo evolves with it. Uh, and you can use the open telemetry demo to see how you can use open telemetry on your own applications. So let's take first a look on the architecture of this web store. So as you can see, there are a lot of different microservices that build this uh, demo. Uh, each one of them was built with uh, a different programming language. So you can see how open telemetry uh, fits with, with each programming language uh, in all of the um, popular frameworks for which language. Um, and all of these uh, microservices send telemetry data to the open telemetry collector, which is also a part of this demo. Uh, and then we have uh, the backend, which is also open source. So we have uh, uh, Jagger uh, and Grafana that collect the metrics uh, and traces from all of the uh, microservices and visualize it for you. So let's take a look on how this is actually looks like. So let's start with the open telemetry demo. Uh, I've Googled open telemetry demo, and the first result is the documentation of open telemetry demo. So let's open the documentation. Um, and here you can see how to run the demo. You can run it on Docker or on Kubernetes. Uh, I'm running it on my machine on Docker. Um, and you can also see here the different programming languages that are used in this demo. Um, how are these libraries instrumented? Uh, some of them are with automatic instrumentation, other with manual instrumentation. Um, and you can see the different libraries and you can get a sense of how are they used uh, in this project. So let's select uh, uh, the Docker uh, layout. Um, this is what I've, I'm running on my machine. Um, I've run these commands. Uh, so it is now running and we can browse for it. So let's open first the, the web store so we can see what we are running. So this is the web store. Uh, as you can see, we're selling telescopes uh, and we have uh, some products. Uh, so here you can see the product. Uh, you can add it to your cart um, and we can continue shopping. Uh, we can see recommendations. Um, but if we will click on this product, we will see that we have an error. We can't see the product. Let's try to refresh it a couple of times. Oh, we're still getting this error. So let's try to troubleshoot this error. So we will go back to the documentation and let's open our dashboards on Grafana and see what we can see there. So this is also, as you can see, running on my machine. It is a part of the uh, demo layout. Um, so we will open our dashboard. Let's open the, uh, uh, the demo dashboard here. 
And yeah, you can see that we have a lot of errors from our front-end uh, uh, service. So let's take a deeper look into our front-end microservice. Uh, this time, we want to see the traces. So I will open uh, Jager. Jager is another CNCF open source project for uh, traces uh, visualization. Um, here, we'll choose the front-end um, the front end service, and we will search for traces with arrow. And let's uh, search for the last five minutes only, and let's see what we can find. So we have all kind of arrows. I'm searching for an error with a get, right? With with a get request. So I think this is it. Let's let's check if we got the, the right one. So here we can see the tags from our uh, 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 span. Uh, these uh, uh, tags, the attributes from the the span from the request, are collected automatically by OpenTelemetry. Um, so we can see uh, uh, the URL that, were, that was used in this request. Um, we can see that it actually contained an error in it. Uh, let's check that this is the, the right URL. So we can uh, uh, reopen our, uh, our product and we can see that this is uh, uh, the right product ID. Okay, this is the same ID, so uh, we are in the right place. So let's take a deeper look. Um, we can see uh, 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 that the error started here in the product catalog service. So let's open this, this request uh, and take a look at what we can see here. So here again, we can see the product ID, this pro problematic product ID, uh, and we can see the error. And the error is that um, product catalog service fail, feature flag enabled. Um, and we can also see uh, uh, some logs here that also indicates that the feature flag is enabled. So let's check what are these feature flags. Um, so you can see that we have a feature flag UI in the documentation of, uh, of the demo. So uh, these are actual feature flags uh, uh, in our web store. And one of them uh, is a feature flag that uh, enable us to, to fail a specific uh, product on our catalog. Uh, and you can see that this is enabled. So let's change this uh, feature, disable it, save it, and let's check if this was the actual problem. Um, so let's refresh it. And yeah, you can see that now uh, this product is, is working again. So this is just a demonstration on how you can use OpenTelemetry to troubleshoot a, a problem on your application. Um, just to conclude this part of the talk, I want to uh, talk about how you can use this, this demo. The OpenTelemetry community demo is a very powerful uh, uh, tool, and you can use it in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can check on how OpenTelemetry is used in your specific use case. So you can select the programming language that you are using. Maybe you can you can search for the specific framework that you are using if they are using on if, if they are being used in the OpenTelemetry uh, demo. And you can see how OpenTelemetry is used in this uh, uh, specific use case. And you can learn how to implement OpenTelemetry on your services on your applications. Another use case is by sending the telemetry data from the OpenTelemetry community demo to your observability backend. If you are already using some backend for observability, you can send the data from the OpenTelemetry community demo to your backend, and you can see how OpenTelemetry data looks like on your backend. And it can give you an idea uh, if you want to proceed with OpenTelemetry or not. Another use case can be using uh, uh, the backend that are provided in this uh, in this demo uh, that I showed you uh, uh, earlier. Uh, you can send telemetry data from your application if you already have telemetry data 
uh, created and generated by your application, you can send this telemetry data to the backend uh, of the Open Telemetry demo, and you can see how uh, uh, open source fr uh, uh, frameworks and open source tools uh, visualize your specific uh, data. So these are all kind of ways that you can use to uh, uh, that you can use the Open Telemetry uh, demo for, and I really encourage you to take a look and, and and check it out. So that's it. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you have any questions on Open Telemetry on this talk, uh, if you want the slides for this talk, you can uh, reach out. I'm available on Twitter or LinkedIn. You can also use this QR code to get in touch with me. So thank you again. I'm Yosef Arabiv and see you. Bye bye.